is as a man thinketh. You can be seated. One of the most amazing gifts that God has given us is the human mind. It is the ability to learn, the ability to think, the ability to choose, and reason is the essence of what makes us human. While the ability to think makes us human, it actually goes deeper than that, folks. You see, your thoughts become a reflection of who you really are. God certainly understands this, and he speaks of this in various places all through his word. And one of the verses that we often quote to, to back to this, back this up is Proverbs 37, uh, 23, verse 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And while this is true. Proverbs 23 can be uniquely applied. You see, what the Bible means by as a man thinks, so is he. Truly all of our hearts, women and men, are similarly, similarly prone to sin. And let's consider the full verse so we can get this, the right perspective. In, in Proverbs 23, 7, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now listen, Eat and drink, saith he unto thee, but his heart is not with thee. What you see in this verse is a person who is saying one thing with their mouth, but in their heart is in, in a completely different place. When faced with this conundrum, we, uh, which, one would, which one would you believe today? Which one? You believe that what is in the heart? Or the thoughts and the inclinations of the heart shape the reality of who you are. They shape your thinking, which will ultimately shape your actions. And that's why, folks, what you think about matters. Because it is forming the basis of who you will become. You see, because there is something about this verse that cannot be overlooked. Who you are on the inside and what you say on the outside don't always line up. The Pharisees, for example, they were good at presenting themselves as various, very pious and, and devout and religious people, yet Jesus called them hypocrites. The word hypocrite in the Greek means actor. The Pharisees were playing a role on the outside that didn't reflect who they really were. Amen. If you need to know who a person really is, you can't always determine by the things that they say. You must look at the root of who they are and the root of the heart. What is it? Everything a person is flows out of their heart. Amen. Jesus said you will know a tree. How? By its fruits, amen? The fruit of the tree is simply a reflection of the root that it is connected to. You will never get an orange from an apple tree root. The core of who you are is evident by the thoughts of the roots of your heart. And why is, folks, that is why what is on the inside is so much more important than what is on the outside. You can mask the outside of others to other people. And you can try to bury it in the, in the world around you. But ultimately, what is in your heart will reveal who you really are. You see, folks, a mind is a very valuable thing. Your mind, no matter how big or small it is, is a valuable thing. The Bible describes our minds by using the figure of a ship looking for a harbor. <clears throat> and though you may be unable to keep disease-ridden ships from sailing back and forth in the ocean... You certainly can refuse them docking privileges in the harbor of your mind. Job talks about those who harbor resentment in their hearts. The psalmist talks about those who harbor malice in their minds. And Jesus talks about those who allow bitter envy and selfish ambition to harbor within them. In Jeremiah 4, verse 14, how long will you harbor your evil thoughts? In Deuteronomy 15, 9, be careful not to harbor this wicked thought. In Matthew 9, verse 4, why do you, certain, why do you entertain evil thoughts? in your mind. In Romans 13, 14, rather clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of sinful nature. 
Folks, understand today, your mind is the most valuable thing that you have in your possession. Amen. And the way you spend your mind is the most, un, uh, is the utmost importance. And you will become what you think. Marcus Aurelius the most important thing in life are the thoughts that you choose to think. Gary Collins said, if doubtless, if doubtless it is the true that people become what they think about. It is doubtless, amen? Folks, your mind is under siege every single second of every day, folks. There is a great plan to control your thinking. In, a, in, a, in the course of time, you will become on the outside what you believe on the inside. And understand me today, folks. The devil loves to take advantage of a mind that is ignorant or one that is pushed around by wayward emotions. A man named Oswald Sanders said this, the mind of a man is the battleground on which every moral and spiritual battle is fought. Vance Har Harver said, our defeat or victory begins with what we think. If we guard our thoughts, we shall not have much trouble anywhere else along the line. Amen. And hallelujah. Understand these things, folks. Understand how important your mind is. Understand, amen, you got to watch the right things. You got to listen to the right things. You got to think the right things. You got to read the right things. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, casting down what? Imaginations and everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity. Listen, every thought, why? To the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. Romans 12, chapter 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Uh, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Philippians chapter 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which all, was also in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 26 and 3, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusts in thee. Hallelujah. Matthew 22 and 37, Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, and with all of thy mind. Two of the Lord's characters, the man with his hand on the plow in Luke 9. Luke 9, verse 62, and Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and is looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. You see, what was Jesus addressing here? He was addressing a crowd of people who were considering following him, but they had various difficulties with the call. One man could not give up his home in Luke 9, 57 and 58. One man could not give up his dead relatives in Luke 9, 59. And one man could not give up his family. In Luke 9, 61, all the experiences prompted that what Jesus said today. Maybe Jesus, folks, was reverting back to a memory of a carpet, being a carpenter's shop. Amen. When under Joseph's instructions, Jesus had finished his first plow that he made. And the farmer came to pick it up. And soon he was in a field. He was plowing. And maybe Jesus sips, slips off and he goes to watch this farmer use his plow that he had just made. He stands off from a distance, and as he used the plow that he made, the farmer was using it. Jesus was intently watching the farmer use this plow, and he had watched the direction of the farmer, which the seed was going, he, where he was going to plant it, and he noticed the care that he had for his oxen as they were in the yoke, and he observed precious, uh, the precision, uh, folks, uh, that he adjusted the plow to dig into the earth. He had most of all than they noticed uh, the focus of the farmer. That's the most important thing. Uh, what was the farmer's focus uh, as he plowed that field? Uh, one of the things, folks, he never looked back. Uh, once he started his row, the force of his focus uh, was forward thinking. Amen? The farmer looked uh, at the plow. Uh, wherever the farmer looked, that plow, and he held it. It cut deep into the soil. And when the farmer got to the hard ground, uh, there the rocks were, uh, and the roots were contentious. Uh, 
He never lost his focus. He just kept on plowing. Amen. But when the farmer got to the place that the weeds had taken over and the foul ground, he just kept on plowing. And I wonder, folks, how many blisters burst on that plow handle. And I'm sure many drops of sweat fell on that plow. But maybe even some tears. Amen. Maybe he was praying when he was using that plow handle. The Lord never went into any details of the matter. All he said was that the man never looked back. As a man thinketh, so is he, folks. I'm wondering today if there's any Christians in this house. You call yourself a Christian, but in your mind, you've been thinking of the things as you put on the Pentecostal suits and the Pentecostal dresses, and you walk around, and you tell people you're Pentecost, but in your mind, you're looking back. In our mind, we're looking back. See, folks, there is power that comes from focus. I'm telling you. Hey, man, if you want God to be used of God, you've got to focus on where I want to go. I'm going to make heaven my home. I'm not worried about what's behind me. Hey, man, I'm, I'm plowing. I'm doing the will of God. Come on, worship him right now. If you can just think. If you can just give your mind to God in such a way that God can use it, it will be amazing, folks, what he will do with you. You will have, amen, to endure some calamities in life and some deep disappointments along the way. But they have the power to elevate, amen, your life if you can make sure your thinking is right. You see, the farmer had an aim, folks. His ultimate aim was a great harvest. But in the interim, he had to focus on plowing straight roads. Benjamin Franklin, he had 13 virtues he talked about. He identified these things. And it would make him, he said, if I can do these things, it will make me a better person. It will make me more successful. And they included temperance, which is self-control. They included silence and order and restitution. They included frugality and industry and sincerity. Things like justice and moderation, cleanliness, tranquility, chastity, and humility. You see, Benjamin Franklin knew that just writing down the words on the list would have a little effect on his day-to-day -day behavior, amen, but he knew that if people do not change by thinking, but they change rather by doing, and so he set himself on a self-improvement program, and he concentrated on practicing each of these virtues for one week before moving on to the next week, and each week of practical, uh, uh, each week of practice, he believed would create a habit of behavior that would just stay with him over time. And then the 13 virtues would be a part of his manner of living. It would be a part of his dealing with other people. He even kept a notebook where he recorded every lapse of virtuous behavior as a way of keeping track of his progress. You see, the virtue of industry was what might commonly refer to as time management. He wrote in his journal, lose no time. Be always employed in something useful. Cut off all unnecessary actions. This made Franklin one of the most diligent and focused men that have ever lived. His thinking is what pushed him in the right direction. You see, folks, understand me today. Life must have a focus. I said life must have a focus. Life must have a definite aim about it. You see, our actions are always in harmony with the thoughts that we have. Whatever we are thinking will dominate us so that we will find ourselves pursuing our thoughts. And that is why. Paul was so insistent on making sure that we, he, we had the ability to think right. You see, some lose their focus, and they look back, and when they are plowing for various reasons, they aren't willing to give up some of their friends. They're not willing to give up some of their social connections. So some give up because they want to give in to their sin one more time. You see, some people give up, and they look back because they are tired of the spiritual tension that is 
created in their soul. And what could be said about uh, Lot's wife? In a summary of her actions, folks, uh, she was looking back while she was getting out. This is the attitude that a host of people in our generation are caught up with. As a man thinketh, so is he. Is your thinking forward or is your thinking backwards? One of the greatest dilemmas of life is that we have an interest in what we what is in front of us, an equal interest in what is behind us, and have a halfway man, hear me today, folks, a halfway man will ruin everything that he sets his hand to do. Henry Ward Breacher, he said, hold yourself responsible for a higher standard than anyone else expects of you. Never excuse yourself. Never pity yourself. Be a hard master to yourself. So I asked you today, where is your mind? Right now, where is your mind? So wherever your mind is, your body will follow. Wherever your mind is, your body will soon be there. In the autobiography of Martin Luther King Jr., he writes about growing up in Atlanta, Georgia. He said, I remember another experience I used to have in Atlanta. I went to high school on the other side of town to the Booker T. Washington High School. I had to get the bus in what was known as the Fourth Ward, a ride over to the west side. In those days, rigid patterns of segregation existed on the buses, so the Negroes had to sit in the back of the bus. Whites, whites were seated in the front and I and often if whites didn't get on the bus those seats were still reserved for whites only so Negroes had to stand over empty seats and would have to end up having to go to the back of the bus with my body but every time I got on that bus I left my mind in the front seat and I said to myself one of these days I'm going to put my body where my mind is and he did, folks. You see, folks, our, our bodies always end up where our minds are. Now, can you think it, folks? If you can think it, God can help you do it. Hear me today. If you can think it, I said God can help you do it. The second character that God talks about is also with us. The name shows up in one of the Lord's parables in Matthew 13, 45 through 46. He said, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. And so who, when he was found, one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. You see, one day in his travels, the merchant is rewarded with the, the discovers this pearl like none that has ever been. He had to have in his collection among his merchandise. In his wildest dreams, he had never, ever expected such a treasure. And when, folks, he is told of the price, he immediately develops a plan. It will require everything that he has he will have to sell everything that he has but the cost is not too much for him you see he spent his entire life looking for this prayer this pearl it doesn't matter what he will have to give up folks every man no matter what age he is is pursuing something today hear me today folks I said every man and woman it doesn't matter what age you are you are pursuing something in your life he's thinking his thinking pushed him towards something to pursue you will always have to refuse the urge to quit and to throw in the towel but uh, folks there will be temptation to give up or to give in uh, amen I wonder how many times the merchant man had to deal with the criticism of well-meaning people I wonder if he ever had to endure the thoughts that others perceived him to be a little bit crazy I wonder if everyone or anyone ever told him that he was wasting his time you see folks if you're godly if your righteous thinking leads you to a lifestyle amen that people think you are a little bit crazy let me tell you today so be it hallelujah you be easy we are looking for a pearl that only a few in this world will ever be able to attain and 
1899, the Literary Digest magazine had this to say about audible bills. You see, the ordinary horseless carriage is a, is a present of luxury for the wealthy. They said this, and though, although its price will probably fall in the future, it will never, of course, come into a common use as the bicycle. And let me tell you something, folks. Four years later, Detroit lawyer Horace Rackman was advised by the president of Michigan Savings Bank, amen, that the horse is here to stay, but the automobile is only a novelty. It is only a fad. Before he bought stocks in Henry Ford's Ford Motor Company, thankfully, Rockman ignored the advice, and in 1908, the Ford Motor Company designed the Model T automobile, which by 1918 would make up for half of the total cars in America. There is a great price on the pearl. Paul carried the pearl through imprisonment. He carried the pearl through darkness. Paul carried it through shipwreck. Paul carried this pearl through martyrdom. Shadrach carried the gem, amen, through the furnace, heated seven times hotter. Elijah hung on to the pearl through his depression. Jeremiah found the company of the pearl when he was in the pit. David took solace from the pearl when he was in the cave of Adam. Joseph clung to the pearl when he was in the pit. And when he got into prison, and many others have said, folks, have let this pearl of great price sustain them in their darkest days. There was a poem written by two men. They were in prison. Two of the most important lines of that poem go like this. Two men looked out from prison bars as the stand. Two men looked out from prison bars. One saw the mud. The other saw the stars. What are you looking at? Where is your mind focused on today? As a man thinketh, so is he. Folks, understand me today. You can live with the mud or you give yourself to seeing the stars. The choice is entirely up to you. So as a man thinketh, so is he. Are you thinking the thoughts that God wants you to think? Well, I don't know what God wants me to think. Yes, you do. Think on him. He's good. He's awesome. He's almighty. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. We have to keep our focus. I want to open this altar today, folks. I want to encourage you. If you're not exactly focused where you need to be, maybe you could come up to this altar and get in alignment. Say, God, adjust me. Search my heart, God. I don't want anything to come between me and you, God. I don't want anything to come between me and you, God. I got to make heaven my home. I don't want to be looking back. Come on up this altar. Say to God, I encourage you. Bring somebody with you. Come on, let God help and give you a refocus here right now. 